The solar system is filled with interesting places for future human exploration. From Europa, Jupiter's moon, possibly having a liquid ocean under its ice, to our own moon, with increasingly clear signs of liquid water. It's hard to imagine that humanity will continue to exist only on planet Earth. Visiting Mars or creating long-term habitats on the moon or in Earth's orbit are already in the plans of space agencies and private companies. But long journeys in space are difficult and filled with problems to be solved, such as high exposure to radiation, the need to maintain an artificial atmosphere, and carrying large quantities of food, in addition to the damage caused by the lack of gravity itself. We already have partial solutions or ways to mitigate most of these problems, but completely solving these challenges is still a long way off. Hey, Pedro here. This video you are watching was originally in Portuguese, my native language. This is the attempt of our team to translate it to English, and I sincerely hope you enjoy it. Your feedback is extremely important to us. Now, back to the video. But when that day comes, humanity will be ready for something bolder than colonizing Mars or the Moon. With enough technology, we can colonize space itself, creating entire cities in the void. Perhaps space is not the final frontier, but an open space, ready to be used and become another home for creativity and a symbol of human capability. So let's fasten our seatbelts and take off, and by that I mean calmly study the difficulties we need to overcome to create a space city and also see what a realistic space city would look like based on today's technologies. And we are going to start by the mortality problem, which I think is a healthy way to make a list. The first problem is the problem of the atmosphere. Humans are living on the surface of the planet Earth, where the atmosphere is composed of nitrogen and oxygen, and trace gases such as carbon dioxide, methane, and argon. We humans breathe oxygen, and it has an entire biological cycle. Animals and plants on the surface consume oxygen and produce CO2, carbon dioxide. Algae and surface plants produce oxygen from CO2. Unfortunately, such a natural cycle is not possible in space. In an artificial city floating in the cosmic expanse, humans will be the main inhabitants. And humans consume oxygen and need the atmosphere to be maintained at a pressure close to Earth's atmospheric pressure. This implies two things. First, we need to prevent major gas losses in the space city, that is, avoid depressurization. Because a rapid depressurization can cause a series of acute health problems. And, in the worst case scenario, total depressurization can even make your lungs explode from the inside out. And secondly, we also need some artificial oxygen cycle, that is, some chemical process capable of recycling the carbon dioxide and transforming it back into oxygen. Depending on the efficiency and durability of these two systems, our space city could be independent of a planetary atmosphere. And this would open interesting doors for traveling with this city to remote corners of the solar system or even, who knows, other stars. The next problem is the issue with food. Humans need to eat to live. Currently, space trips are short enough that astronauts simply carry all the food they will consume or even receive additional food, as in the case of the International Space Station. This is, in fact, the most expensive food delivery in history. Creating an independent city in space means developing some way to produce food in space. We still have a lot to learn about how to produce food on a large scale in the space environment. An independent space city would likely need to dedicate a large area of its surface to food production, in addition to ensuring the presence of the correct nutrients for the plants to grow. Growing food in space will be a tremendous engineering and logistical effort since hunting is not an option. But even with all these numerous difficulties, the International Space Station already has plant habitats, and they grow well enough to become part of the astronauts' diet. Even with many difficulties, everything indicates that it is possible to solve the food problem in space. With food and an atmosphere, it would be possible to stay in space for years without relying on health. And it is on this scale of months and years that the next two problems come into play. The damage caused by radiation and the lack of gravity. The Earth's magnetic field protects us from most radiation from space. For example, an astronaut on the International Space Station gets daily radiation equal to one or two X-rays. NASA sees radiation as the main health hazard on the ISS. Any and every cell in the human body can be affected by radiation. This means it can cause all kinds of damage, such as alterations in the cardiovascular system, damaging the heart and the arteries that transport blood, or reducing the nervous system's ability to produce new cells, which leads to memory loss and a general decline in cognitive ability. Because of this, 
the search for ways to block space radiation and significantly mitigate its damage is one of the main research points of NASA's Human Research Program. This includes both the search for materials and designs that minimize radiation exposure, as well as the search for treatments to prevent the worst damage from radiation. The other long-term problem is the lack of gravity. Without the constant presence of gravity, a series of physiological problems manifest. The most immediate and the most obvious are the loss of muscle capacity and bone strength. These can at least be minimized with regular exercise in space, but not completely prevented. However, the other two main effects of the lack of gravity cannot. The lack of gravity also causes vision and coordination problems. These two can be especially problematic on long-term missions, where a well-trained astronaut might simply lose the ability to perform accurately after months of space travel, which could honestly be catastrophic in an emergency or any other event requiring quick and precise action. And we only know one way to avoid these damages, which is to mimic Earth's gravity using artificial gravity. Artificial gravity is the favorite technology of science fiction series and movies. They include those space bases in the form of rotating rings or completely cylindrical spacecraft that also rotate. And it is the rotation of these spacecraft that mimics Earth's gravity by centrifugal force. Centrifugal force is what you feel when you are in a car and it makes a sharp turn. Your body is thrown against the side of the car, and if you are in space in a rotating cylinder, you will feel this same effect, but constantly. By adjusting the radius of the cylinder and the rotation speed, we can mimic the force of gravity. The imitation is not perfect. The constant rotation creates some other effects that confuse the body's sense of balance. So, the cylinder cannot rotate more than four times per minute without causing nausea and discomfort. But artificial gravity depends on the speed of rotation, so the cylinder needs to move quickly, significantly more than four times per minute. The solution is to make a very large cylinder, the bigger, the better, so that it can move quickly but perform less than four rotations per minute even at extremely high speeds. Artificial gravity is the only way we know to combat the effects of zero gravity on the human body, and there is a lot of interest in the few studies conducted on the topic. A gigantic cylindrical ship with artificial gravity like the one I described probably won't exist anytime soon, but it is likely research on artificial gravity will become more common in preparation for traveling to Mars. The first forms of artificial gravity will probably not be systems that produce continuous gravity for an entire spacecraft. We will first need to investigate the effects of combining exercise with intermittent exposure to artificial gravity, something that fits better with the size and design of modern rockets. In other words, astronauts will probably only spend a few hours a day with gravity, likely while exercising, to investigate if this is enough to combat the damage caused by zero gravity. But it is possible that the only way to completely prevent these damages is a giant spacecraft, constantly generating Earth's gravity. And if that is the case, we will have every incentive to one day, in the distant future, create cities in space. Even if these cities are essentially just like a big bus, functioning as a means to take humans from Earth to Mars or beyond. So perhaps a better analogy would be large spacecraft capable of carrying large quantities of people or materials between planets, moons, and maybe even stars. That's why this design of spacecraft is often called a generational ship because they literally house generations of people until they reach their destination, usually distant stars. If you could go anywhere in space inside one of these spacecraft, where would you go? Leave your answer in the comments. Thank you very much and see you next time.